Hey everybody. So today, this is our first bag pattern that we've ever released and Kaylina designed it. So it's not a bucket bag, we're calling it the bucket tote. And uh, we're gonna be making this bag step by step all the way through today. It features a double seam on the bottom like we did our tutorial last week. So if you haven't watched that, watch that before you watch this if you wanna know how the seam is made. Um, and the cool thing about this bag is you can do, it's, I think it looks like a super highly designed minimalist like market tote market bag right now, but you can modify it with the pattern to do multiple handles, you can do an extra seam and almost make it look just very traditional. Um, so I'm in love with this pattern. Everything Kaylina Designs I like, everything Kaylina Designs you guys just, those are our best selling patterns and I'm excited to make this with you guys and see what you guys come up with after the video is done. So let's get into it. So we have some five ounce Herman Oak veg tan here. Five ounce is a good one. Um, for the liner piece you can go a little thinner if you want. And this is the whole pattern, basically. On this side, um, you have all the measurements for, uh, it's just straps and your front panel. So we figured there's no reason to make you print out like three pieces of paper and tape together, you know, a 23 inch long strip of three quarter inch leather. You can just cut a three quarter inch strip and all the measurements you need to cut it are here and the body panel, the square for that as well. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is um, we need to get all this stuff traced and cut out. So the cut list calls for a couple of strips. It calls for a three quarter inch strip and it calls for a one inch strip. The three quarter inch strip is the welt that's gonna do our double bottom construction. Then I'm gonna adjust my strap cutter to one inch and that is going to be for our handle. Now you can make this a double handle or a single handle piece. I'm gonna, we already have one, an example of the single handle, so let's make a double handle. So we'll cut two of these and then we'll glue them. Once we have them cut to size, we'll glue them to a backing. So these are our two one inch strips for our handles. You can make these any length you want. Uh, we suggest, we have a suggestion in the pattern. Um, I'm going to round them off. I'm using a one inch strap end punch from Weaver. Actually, just we just got this one in. It's always super beautiful to get a new one in. Um, and I like these the best because they don't continue up. There are some like that are this style where it does the curve, but then it goes up on each side. I like them open-ended like this. To me, they're, they're easier to use, um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so I have the first ends punched. I'm gonna measure our length off of this end and punch our second ends. So I'm gonna do a little bit of skiving before we start to assemble everything. I'm gonna skive the base of the bag. This will help us with this curve when we're gluing our, and like I said in the last video, I don't, I know it's not called a welt, but for this seam, I just call it a welt. So if you hear me saying welt, you'll know I'm referring to the piece that's gonna join this in here. Um, a lot of you guys were talking about it in the comments of the last video. No one really knows what it's called, so we'll just call it a belt for now. And then I'm gonna do both sides of my, or one side of my liner. I'm gonna leave one side full thickness so that we get a nice uh, formidable seam on the top. Gives it a lot of um, strength. So we need to glue our liners onto our body panels. And we can do that, but I like to mark the stitch lines first. So obviously I have just my normal stitch line um, that I set with our normal dividers. That's about 3.5 millimeters. The way I'm gonna get the other one is, so this is our liner that's gonna be glued there on the other side. I'm gonna take my dividers, I'm gonna go down. And you can aim, if you're really, really good, you can get the same gap. I just kinda go for close because things tend to deviate once you've glued them glued things down and that kind of thing. So we're just gonna set it a little bit more than that, about right there, which that's probably four, four and a half mil. And then I'm going to transfer that line to my body piece, both of them. And now we can glue and we have a stitch line So 
So while we're waiting for those that glue up to dry, I'm also going to glue up my two handles and I'm just going to glue them to another piece of that 5 ounce natural veg from Herman mm -hmm. Oak. And so we'll have a nice little 10 ounce handle that we'll stitch all together. You could do this with just solid 10 ounce leather too you don't, if you don't want to stitch it. All right, and once we get everything glued down, check this out. We got a new tool. I'm oblivious to the tool market, and I didn't even know these existed for leather work. But Weaver sells these real heavy rollers, and I've been using one for the last couple of weeks, and it is game changer. Super cool. And we'll give these a little roll, and then we're ready to stitch. So last night I got a little bit of the sewing done, just stuff that, just all straight lines. So as we marked the stitch line, you can see we get nice even stitch lines on the back of our little liner here. And then I got one of the two handles done. I still have to get the other one done, but it's just a lot of stitching. So what we're gonna focus on now is getting the welted piece into our double bottom. The way we're gonna do this is we're going to, this piece is a little bit longer than we need it. So what we're going to do is on one side, we're going to skive it down, and then we're going to start by gluing this end. We're going to glue, we're going to glue it all around, all the way around. I'll make sure this is straight. And then we're going to skive the other side and get it nice and overlapping. Because we are um, gluing this, we're going to glue this uh, grain to grain, not flesh to flesh. So this is going to be another instance where we want to lay our stitch line down and only glue inside of the stitch line. Because if we glue outside of the stitch line, once everything's sewn together, you're going to see that glue outside of the stitches and we don't like that, or we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to mark this stitch line first. Then I'm going to mark only one stitch line on the other side, or on our weld I mean. So we're going to take this and we're going to mark one stitch line here. And I didn't skive the welt at all. You don't have to use very thick leather. I'm using a little bit thicker leather than you probably need. It's about five and a half ounces. I have skived down our base piece just to make it a little more maneuverable. Um, this will be a little bit tricky to bend around, but it shouldn't be impossible. And you don't want to make any relief cuts because we're going to be stitching this side to the bag, the body of our bag. So let's get the glue on first, and then we're gonna go through the kind of tedious process of just gluing everything around and getting it to fit right. Oh, and we're also using, this is um, Ritz of Tiger Thread, but it's called Silver. I figured I'd give it a try as kind of like a, it's almost got like a Yeezy monochrome vibe to it. I don't know, just wanted to try something new. So Ritz of Tiger Thread, Silver, 0.6 millimeter with five millimeter stitching. So as much as I don't like using alligator clips because I think I should just use stronger glue, um, on a piece like this it is pretty important to use them because of all the curves. The other thing is, remember we talked about how we have weld wood and I think they changed the formula. It's just not as... the bond isn't as good anymore. Um, we did get a nice big thing of barge. Um, so we'll switch to that, but the glue pots were out of stock. so. We had to wait for glue pots to come in, but we should have everything all set up soon for our new foray into using barge full time and not being lazy and using hardware store glue. So I have the end of our welt that I skive down. Now you can put this wherever you want, but you have to remember that your seam is gonna fall wherever you put it. So I'm just gonna line it up in the center of one of the sides and I'm gonna work my way down. And I'm gonna kind of alternate whatever you find that you like best for tools for like sticking things, whether that be a bone folder or a hammer. 
the only thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to constantly be pulling your welt because what, what's going to happen is you're going to put a lot of tension on it and as soon as any of the glue gets a little unsticky, not after you've sewn it of course, but before that, it can pop up. You're actually going to want to push a little bit to make sure that you're getting, um, you're not causing any extra tension on these little curves. So I'm just going to slowly go around and then I'm going to add one of my clip, a bunch of clips once I get these where I want them. And the difference between this and piping, right, is that you can't cut relief slits really because we're working in kind of tight corners. But if you go slow and you use a good sticky glue and some clips, you really shouldn't have a problem. It doesn't need to be perfect either. Um, we are going to, we'll sand this down after we stitch it up and burnish it to make it all nice, even though it's going to be on the inside of the bag. And sometimes, since I don't use those clips much, sometimes I put them on too soon. I'll take this clip off. So we see we have our skived piece right here. I'm going to grab a pencil. And I'm just going to come in and make a little mark where we want this piece to be skived to so that it'll overlap it. And I'm also going to make a mark here, which is where this piece starts. So we know to cut it and just skive that little corner so that hopefully it'll all blend in nicely. And remember, all this is going to be on the inside of the bag. You're not really ever going to see it except for like one little piece on the edge. But it's worth it if you're making the, if you're taking the time to do this kind of seam. You might as well do all these little details to make it super nice. So, really simple. I'm just going to slide my cutting mat under this piece. I'm just going to use my knife to make a straight cut. And then, holding this is a little difficult, but there we go. And that's all we need. And then, you can kind of take a look at your handiwork. I don't know if I can... You can take a look at your handiwork here. Can you see it? So see how we sky both pieces down into triangles so that they create one solid seam. And that's looking good to me. So I'm just going to take a little dab of glue. Oh, this glue thing is stuck. Okay. A little dab of glue. I'm going to put a little on this side. A little on this side. And we'll just put a little more here because it had stuck and then we pulled it up. We'll let that dry and then we can do the last of our sticking. And actually, I'm going to re-install these alligator clip things too. Now that this glue's dry, we're ready to seal off our little joint here. And it's because we put it on the flat part, it's a nice simple process of just kind of overlapping it. The only thing you want to make sure of is that well, we can get that off. You don't want to glue past this seam. I can get that off with some crepe. You don't want to glue past this seam, obviously, because then you'll see the glue. So now that we have that stuck, give it a good hammer. And I'm actually going to let this sit for about five to ten minutes, just to let these clips kind of keep doing the pressure thing and get it more stuck, because the more adhered this is, the easier it's going to be to punch everything out. So while that glue is setting up, we have its decision time. So here is one of the sample bags that Kalina made, and here is another one of the sample bags that Kalina made. Now in the pattern, we're making the square version, which is straight up and down. This one has just the measurements. It says cut out a square this size. There is an actual pattern piece for this one. As you can see, it's angled, and with the double stitch line, it looks a bit more... Um, I want to say old-fashioned colonial, maybe. It looks, this is pretty modern, like very sleek. This one just kind of looks like a nice bucket bag um, or a bucket tote. So what you need to decide is what you want to do with handles. As you can see on this one, there's two handles, right? Now, admittedly in this design, you only need one handle. This is one of those designs that like Kalina worked on for a while and like reduced and reduced and reduced to the point where the bag is just perfectly simple, but in like a super useful way. However, if you want to get a little fancy and make a bag that looks really beautiful and symmetrical when it's sitting, or if you want to use it to store it on a shelf instead of actually using it as a bag, you can put the two handles on. 
on the pattern you have for your lining, you have three choices to punch your holes for the Chicago screws that you're going to use that will allow the handles to rotate. So I am going to do, we have a version with one handle, we have a version with two separate handles. What I want to try, because we're not done experimenting with this design either, is I'm going to do a single center hole with two handles coming from it. I just want to see what it looks like. And the best part is if we don't like it, we know we can take one of the handles off and we have this beautiful, basically another one of these. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to place my template on the front of my panel here that I've sewn up and I'm just going to mark where I need my hole on each one. And you can see with your branding, um, it is tempting to put branding like right in the center here, but remember you're going to have, your handle's going to be sticking right there. So I just chose to brand it centered underneath on like the top third of the bag. Um, and then I have my big rotary punch here and we're just going to punch a Chicago screw sized hole in both pieces. And now next, we have to punch our, the hole for our Chicago screw in our handle. Um, there isn't a handle, like I said earlier, I didn't make a handle pattern piece because it's just a one inch strap. There are suggestions for handle lengths and to round it off. What we do include is a nice little centering jig that you can cut your ends round if you don't have a belt end punch or a strap end punch. And it also has the circle, the hole, um, so that you can put your Chicago screws in. The cool thing about this is, Kaylina, you can see she was out collecting junipers earlier before work. And she was saying, hey, you know, when I'm, when I'm out there using it like a basket, um, I think I need a little bit of a longer handle. The best thing about this design is you can make multiple size handles and just take one off, put it on. Um, I would love to do a version that has a short handle and a long handle. It might look kind of funny, but it would be kind of super useful if you had your little short handle for the market, but then if you were walking to and from the car or whatever, you had a longer handle you could put either over your shoulder or more along your elbow. Um, so for that reason, you need a one inch wide strap, but you can go anywhere from 12 inches to 20 inches. You know what I mean? So we have just a, the strap end template. So once you have your strap cut, you can do the ends on either side. Um, besides that, we're just gonna punch these out. And then once it is, once we have everything stitched up, it's just a matter of sliding our Chicago screw in. And that gets us a nice functional moving handle. So I forgot to do this uh, really quickly on the pattern. This is our sample pattern. It'll be like just printed out in the regular pattern. Um, I just put a little, a few little marks for like centering lines and I find that helpful. So we're gonna add one, this is just in pencil. So that when we go to install the body of the bag to the bottom of the bag, we just have a few marks to line everything up. Hi, Eric from the future here. I am sewing up our bag body, um, but I forgot to tell you, so you make your center marks on this piece, but then what you also want to do is while these pieces are laying flat before you sew them up, add yourself a little center mark on the inside and then you'll have your center marks will line up. You'll line up the side center marks to your seams and your middle center marks to the center mark you made here. And that'll let you glue this in all nice and centered. So I didn't want you to forget that if you're watching and making along with the video. Before you sew your body panels up, remember, make a small center mark on the inside of it so that you know to glue in your welted bottom. I forget how to sew when I'm on camera. <laughs> it's okay, I forget how to film when I'm holding a camera. <laughs> So Kaylee and I hopped in and sewed this up and uh, so everything's all sewn together and now with it sewn together you can start kind of molding this because this is going to be sewn like this up against the bag. But the one step that I like to take, and I've talked about this a lot, is just to 
come in and burnish this edge. I know it's fiber to fiber, not grain to grain. You're never gonna see it, but it's gonna be on the inside of the bag. And when you reach down there, you're gonna feel it. So this is sanded down to about 600 grit. And we're just gonna do our normal burnishing, which is a little bit of gum trag and some canvas. Actually with this design too, it's so open that you do see it quite oh, that's a bit. Tr yeah, that's true when you so, look in the bag. So it's kind of nice little thoughtful thing to do. And you could probably, it'd be super easy to cut out a liner and just like line this bottom piece totally. too with like some goat skin or something. Yeah. No, That'd no, be pretty sick. That would be nice. So now that we have our base sewn up, waxed, finished edges, it's ready to essentially stick into our cylinder. That's the, what we're gonna make next. We're gonna take our two body pieces and sew up the edges to make our cylinder. Then at the end, we'll take our double seam, we'll stick it up in there We'll punch all around the outside. It's super easy. You're just punch, 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 and we'll sew it up. Now I've done this on, I believe it was my dream tote bag series, maybe, what was it, in the fall, um, maybe in the summer, a little early spring. I'm not really sure when we put it out, but this is the same construction as that. If you look at the finished bag, we're basically just punching one side, punching the other, and we're joining them together and just stitching down the side. There's no glue involved. How do we do that? How we do that is, we're gonna pick one side of our bag and we're going to start, all of our stitch lines are gonna start with one prong hanging over the top of our bag. That'll give us our spacing. Now, if you notice, I've spaced my stitch lines so that that is the spacing. So when I go to punch this, my first stitch line lands directly in the hole I already punched for this horizontal seam. And I'm gonna punch all of my stitch lines all the way down. And now, with our measurements, with this pattern, if you pick up the pattern, this is a five millimeter chisel. Everything will work out perfectly with a three and a half millimeter uh, stitch line allowance there. So this, this is three and a half millimeters from the edge. So we're gonna punch down all the way, and you guys have seen me punch uh, stitch lines hundreds of times. Getting it lined up is the important part. So. You have to remember, you can't punch, you can't punch this one and this one because they're not going to be stitched together. They're going to be stitched like this. So you just have to remember to always start at the top and hang a prong over. And if we do that, when we go to stitch all this stuff together, everything's going to line up. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to get through and punch all these lines and then we'll start, uh, we'll get our stitch line started. All right, so you can see to start sewing up this first seam here, kind of wiggly. I did a nice fat triple stitch over the top. Um, this isn't really gonna be touched or rubbed or anything. I'm not always a huge fan of wrapping stitches around the seam because usually they um, there's a lot of abrasion, but with a bag, not so much. So I like to get a few stitches in the top and then I'm just gonna take one of these alligator clips and just line up my stitch holes as best I can. This isn't permanent or anything, so you can always readjust. And that's pretty much it. Fold these little tabs in here, push it all the way up. This just kind of acts like a third hand. They have, I forget which company makes them. They make the, um, you put the little things through and screw them together. I got a set of those because those will be very useful now that we're doing a lot of bag instructions. But other than that, I'm just sewing straight down. And because we started to punch at this hole on both sides, everything lines up perfectly. And so once we have everything sewn together, so we have our bag sides sewn together, and we have our handles sewn together and our bottom sewn together. You guys saw that. Um, it's time to glue the bottom into the bottom of the bag. So all we're gonna do is grab some glue. And this seam you're not gonna see as much, so you don't have to worry about doing a super tight glue line. And we're just gonna glue on the inside. And remember, we have our marks that we made, so we're gonna be able to line everything up and get it all nice and situated in there. Okay, so I have my little center marks here, and I'm just gonna kind of Line these up as best I can with the center marks that I drew here. And we'll just go around and get this all pressed in. It helps to put your hand on the other side to oh. that. Hey, look at that. There you go, pro tip from the creator herself. Yeah, that makes it wicked easy.
And so here's our unfinished seam. We're gonna go in and sand this down next. And then we're gonna, all we're gonna do is run a stitch line, punch, and sew the bottom. That's how easy this is. And look how crazy, that, how cool that is. It's so sturdy too, because of the double seam. Such good design. All right, so I took it, um, took the bag over to the, the power sander and got everything kind of evened out. But the problem is that it's not, there are little peaks and valleys. So all we're gonna do, this is kind of a weird thing to do, but it works okay. Um, I have a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna put this face down and kind of just drag it a bunch. And that'll basically just kind of flatten out the high and low spots a bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. This whole, this is horrible. <laughs> Nails on a chalkboard. There we go, we're gonna call that good. Let's see how it sits. Yeah, that looks fine. Oh, we got a new cutting board. That other cutting board we've had for, uh, nine years, a single 12 by 18 cutting board. We got three two foot by foot and a half cutting boards. Now our old cutting board that we made all our videos on is now wall art. So last step, we are going to get our stitch marks, get our stitch line drawn out here. And I'm gonna go from the inside punching and then I'm gonna stitch from the outside. And that's a good little tip for if you're using diamond chisels and you wanna, you're wondering why one side of your stitch line is nicely slanted, the other straight, that's a good way to kind of mitigate that. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well. So I made a bit of an oopsie here, and um, I wanted to do two handles that went over top of each other and then split apart like this, but I made both the handles the same length. So when they're folded over, as you can see, it's like making a bifold. One needed to be a little bit longer than the other. So if you want to do it this way, you need to make your one handle needs to be a half inch longer than the other. But that's okay, we still have a beautiful bag with one handle. The only difference is we need to cut out some washers. To make washers, I just use a half inch punch, giant half inch punch. And then we pop those out, punch a hole in the middle that fits our Chicago screw. Assembly doesn't get much easier than this. I'm gonna take my Chicago screw, put it through my handle, put my washer in between the bag and the handle. Pop that in if I can find the hole, yep. Then on the inside, Chicago screws just have a threaded tube and a little screw. We're gonna get that finger tight because I can't see where my flathead is. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna take Chicago screw, pop that through, oops. If you do this, so what I always like to do with Chicago screws is, I'm kind of bad at punching, punching centered holes like this. So you can see it's kind of off to one side, but I keep that hole as small as it possibly can be so that if I need to enlarge it to the one side or the other, it's still a nice tug, nice tight fit. And you can see it's centered now. So it just gives you a little bit of adjustment. When you screw it down, it'll stay where you put it. And same thing for this one. We'll get this one finger tight. And then we can go find a screwdriver and get it actually tight, tight. And here we go. So obviously I haven't conditioned it and we use kind of scrap leather to begin with, but this is gonna be really beautiful once we throw some oil and wax on here, it'll look really nice. Um, you can see, actually I have three renditions here. So 
We have the one that we just made on video, and you can see we did the two stitch lines with the single handle. And the reason that we're putting the spacer or the washer in between the handle and the body is so that when you rotate, you don't have this rubbing on the whole bag body. It makes it a lot smoother that way, but you can experiment, but maybe you do two skinnier washers, one on each side, however it works, and you like it, how it works, go for it. Um, we have our beautiful double bottom. That really shines up when you see it all put together and how clean everything looks. And um, on the inside is um, just one open container, but we, Kalina was, I'm super surprised you can fit so much stuff into this. So let me find some stuff around the shop and we'll show you just how much it can hold. Going out for the day, for the night, some sparklers, <laughs> what? Um, butterfly stickers, hand sanitizer, keys, wallet, AirPods, phone. What is this? Lip balm. <laughs> and then also a bottle of wine and then maybe a second bottle of wine. And anyone in the comments it's gonna be like, those are Riesling bottles, you're cheating. Maybe I am a little bit, but that holds a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, you know, serious though, this is a very compact bag, and I, I don't know what else. We were just finding stuff around the house, or on the shop. Um, two full Yetis, or two of the big Yetis fit in it perfectly. Um, this is a huge eight inch long, Envelope wallet, real big. That's like, you have plenty of room for everything you need to carry in it. Um, which, and I'm not, this isn't a sales pitch. I have nothing to, I mean, I guess you could buy the pattern, but um, we're not selling the bag. It's just, this design is it's just fantastic. And I wanna make sure everybody, cause I know it looks very simple, but gosh, Kalina made one, her first one. And I think it surprised her. It's like the first thing she carries every day that she made, yeah. which I think happens a lot. If you make a lot of stuff, you make a lot of samples and you're like, I'm gonna carry this all the time. And then, Two days later, you're like, nope, not for me. So this is just a really unique design. And if I bring in the other one, you can go super minimal with it. You can omit this bottom seam. You can actually, you could line the entire thing super easily, or you could go a little more classic and do the double handle, two-tone. Um, and remember the pattern is going to have both of these shapes. You'll have the strip, well, you'll have the directions to cut out the square. I didn't think it was really, you guys are good enough to just cut out a square if I give you give you the measurements. But this has a full pattern, so it's a tapered fit. It has a different liner just because of the spacing. These two pieces are gonna be in the pattern as well, So you, and we have the holes to do the doubles, we have the holes to do the singles. I put everything in the pattern, um, just because it's such a unique and cool little bag style. You can see the, the difference in leather with the double bottoms. And it's just so nice. Do you like how it sits on, like it doesn't sit on an actual bottom, yeah. it sits on, it's a lot more rigid it feels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm just real proud of Kaylin and this, this design. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's sick. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, can't wait to see your versions of the bag and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, I didn't use the book though. Oh, there we go. Uh -huh. If you're a realtor and want to spend hundreds of dollars on a basket to stage things on the shelf. <laughs> or you could learn the craft, make it, then stage it. Or Perfect. you need to include a little something something for a long day at the library with the kids when it's raining. <laughs> or you, you picked up a bunch of... <laughs> Seashells. And an evil eye. And you want to ward off evil spirits. <laughs> and you want to look real cool doing it. Yeah, you got to be careful with the placement of those. Oh, there we go. Mid. <laughs> and now the handles don't work. <laughs> okay, maybe not 12 bottles of wine. You could do like, oh well, yeah, you'd have to put them in there. You'd have bag. to go like, uh, oh, this is like a French yeah. picnic style. Right? Oh, two's a bit excessive. <laughs> You know, moderation. What are you it's doing with two? What are you? This is a bag of wine. This bag is about moderation. You dang wine. <laughs>